All right, so I'm, I'm not the pioneer of bump mapping. I'm the pioneer of texture shading, which is an algorithm I came up with a few years ago for doing um, a shade and relief, or a, an alternative method of doing shade and relief. And I'm not going to have time to uh, explain it today, uh, but uh, if you go to textureshading.com, I've got a, a brief explanation, a couple examples here. And so just briefly, at the bottom here is an example of uh, standard hill shading, and I haven't done anything fancy here. I haven't done any generalization to the terrain or whatever, but um, the uh, texture shading then uh, is the, uh, uh, the image here. Uh, so essentially what it does is the canyons now are in, or, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the canyons are in darker colors, the ridges are in lighter colors, and the uh, smaller features are in lower contrast. So that's kind of uh, a summary of what the algorithm does. Some of you have used the texture shading for your maps and have been using a command line driven piece of software that I wrote, which can be a little cumbersome to use. I know not everybody's comfortable doing that. So uh, what I set out to do this year was to convert my software from C to Python. And so maybe some of you are more familiar with uh, running Python code and, uh, and also adds a graphical user interface that makes it a little nicer to use. So it turns out um, I have not designed a user interface before, it turns out that um, it's hard. <laughs> this is not something I knew before. It's kind of like when uh, Donald Trump said uh, nobody knew healthcare could be so complicated. Nobody knew designing a user interface could be so complicated. <laughs> so uh, turns out it is. So anyway, um, so this is what I have so far. I hope to have this a little more polished at this point. So, uh, but I'm going to call this an alpha version. The basic functionality more or less works. It might have some bugs. It's got some missing features. And so if, uh, if you use it, uh, I would appreciate any feedback you have on problems you're having or suggestions for improvements. So if you bring it up and if you're correctly connected to the hotel uh, Wi-Fi, if you uh, check for updates button, we'll give you a reassurance that you have the latest version. And you should check from time to time because I do hope to make some updates and, and fixes and improvements. So uh, click open file. You can select a DEM. Uh, let's see here. So this is going to be an area in the Sierras in California. And one of the advantages of the Python version is it's uh, it opens a much wider variety of file types. Uh, so it'll read just about anything that has uh, elevation data. So uh, what you're seeing here is a preview image. So this is a lower resolution version uh, of, uh, of what the final image is going to be. And the reason for that is it allows us to uh, rapidly update it with the sliders at the bottom. So now we can, we can play with the parameters that define the algorithm and see in real time what happens uh, you know, as we adjust the sliders, and, and so you can see what your image is going to look like before having to actually render it. So if we, if we, the detail slider is the primary um, control for the, uh, uh, that determines what the algorithm does. If we shift it all the way to the left, uh, this is essentially just looking at the raw DEM with elevation represented by grayscale, and then as we move it to the right, we get more and more detail uh, until if we, if we go all the way to the right, then it's just noise. So uh, now the, uh, the software has, uh, it's difficult for the software to automatically uh, set the appropriate contrast. So it makes a, a, a guess, and then the contrast uh, adjustment is also important then. So you'll want to uh, adjust that to your liking. And as you'll find, too, as you adjust the detail, that sometimes you may have to adjust the contrast differently for different levels of detail. So you want to think of those as, as uh, two things that have to be kind of controlled in tandem. So as you adjust one. Uh, you may need to adjust the other as well. And then once you have that set the way you like, uh, you can adjust the brightness, uh, make that a little brighter as well, because by default, the uh, midpoint is always at medium gray, and sometimes that's a little darker than what you might want. So that's a new uh, feature that's not uh, in the, um, uh, the command line driven version. The, uh, the brightness and contrast are a little different uh, in their behavior than what you would get on a standard photo editing uh, tool. So uh, if you think that, uh, oh, I can just deal with that later, I can render the image and adjust the contrast and the brightness later, you're not going to get quite the same result. So you might want to um, adjust those uh, while you're in the program here. And once you have things set up the way you like, you can push the render button. And one of the missing features is it needs to have a uh, progress bar, because for a large image, it can take several minutes to render. And uh, right now, it's just going to sit there and not give you any indication it's doing anything, but it is. Uh, and when it's done, it will ask you for a file name. And where'd my cursor go? Let's see. So, uh, and it's always going to save the image as a GeoTIFF. Uh, yeah. 
and I'm out of time, so I'll just show you on the website here. If you go to the second paragraph, click on the box.com link. And you'll see Python code, and there's a zip file with the source, and a readme that tells you uh, how to install it, and an email address to give feedback. So, thank you.